So we're outside here in Valore. We haven't been spending that much time outside, but today on this Sunday, this hot Sunday where it's 38 degrees outside and humidity is off the charts, we're gonna try to take the bus to Zvedernets and it's supposed to be a peninsula slash beach nearby Valore. With a monastery and a pine forest apparently, and a little village. Should be nice, can't wait to see it. It's about 2.30 p.m. We're walking outside here in Valore and there's not that many people out because it's that damn hot, but I'm pretty sure when we go to the beach, it's gonna be pretty packed. Let's see. Walking down the road of these empty streets in Valore, like I said, in the middle of summer, people don't really come out during the day, at least in this part of the city because it's too damn hot. Gotta stop by the ATM and get cash because Albania is so expensive. When I say Albania is expensive, I just gotta keep it real. What I mean is that a country that has infrastructure like this and settings like this shouldn't cost so much to exist in and do fun stuff in and live in. I've been in countries that have much better infrastructure, much more things to do, much more things to see. And the price of going out to eat is not close to $30 for two people or going to the ATM is not $6 just to withdraw your money. Listen, every country has the right to charge what they wanna charge and make people pay what they wanna pay. But in Indonesia, in Malaysia, even in Tunisia, there's you know much more bang for your buck. Hell, in Turkey too. Turkey, your money goes far and there's a lot of things to do and it's not too bad. I think, I think the reason for that might be that they're very close relationships with Greece and Italy. Maybe they want to be close to the type of tourism that is happening in Greece and Italy, which is much more expensive than what happens in Bosnia, Macedonia, Kosovo, Serbia. And their money is also very closely related to euros as well. So maybe that's the reason. I don't know. If you know, explain. It's European prices, but Balkan travel, which is not a good deal. You do the Balkan travel to get cheaper prices to still see Europe. That makes sense. Anyway, we're back outside. Look at that hill over there. I wonder what that is. And we're just gonna be exploring. We asked somebody earlier how to get to Zvernets and he said, come to this bus stop next to this mosque over here. So hopefully we're in the right place. Look at these black fishing broads. Ain't that a shame. I'm trying to be black, but hate black people. Go. So if you want to go to the beaches near Zvernets, this is the bus you should take. Plasi i Veter. And Plasi means beach. So anywhere you see the word Plasi, that's the beach. And now we wait and we wait and we wait and we wait and we wait. And we wait. Well, that's a new way of sitting on the bench I've never seen. I have to say, in Albania, people are very non-aggressive when it comes to like selling stuff because we're here at the bus station waiting between two cab stations. And if we were in any other country, people would have came up and said, you want a taxi? You want a taxi? You want a taxi? But no, here they're like very chill. They're like, oh, maybe you want a taxi, maybe don't. And it's okay. I actually like this better, you know? We see the taxi. If we want a taxi, we'll holler. You don't have to approach us. If we were in Kenya or in Tanzania or any other places we travel to, the taxi people come up and they just, love to approach and say you want a taxi you want a taxi 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 <laughs> under euro <laughs> here comes the private chauffeur the bus i don't know if this is us but keep it busing nope it's not us god damn it she went and asked and they said it's not us double camera now you're in the matrix now you're in the matrix <laughs> what happens if you put two cameras in double selfie Wow, a new dimension opens up. It's a camera and a camera and a camera. Whoa, <laughs> did you see that? Yeah. Well, it's a camera and a camera. Wait, it's a camera and a camera and a camera. Wow. <laughs> Please let this be our bus. I hope you're our chauffeur. Please, I gotta keep it bussing. All right, please keep it bussing. Please keep me bussing. All right, I'm gonna go ask this time. Hope they respond. All right, so it's the right one. Thank God, made it to the bus. All right, we did it. See, I can do it. I <laughs> know. Once again, Albanian bro taking video of me, but I got video of her. People packing into this bus. Luckily, it's got air conditioning. Everybody's just trying to get to the beach. On the bus, 
rolling down the street. As you can see, it's pretty empty. Even the stores are closed. And I think here on Sunday, a lot of places in Albania are not open. Cafes, restaurants, bars, everything kind of shuts down on Sunday. Maybe in the evening it will open up. Let's see later. It's actually quite comfortable on this bus that has AC. One of the few buses I've seen in Albania that has AC. And I'm standing right under the fence. It's blowing on me. Why does this little bra keep taking pictures of me? You got a whole man. Talk to your man. Well, this part of the city looks really nice. Palm trees, big buildings. Very Mediterranean with that big flag waving for freedom. Take a look at the Valore skyline, their modern buildings, some art on the walls over here, people riding motorcycles and driving their cars to go out to eat and do their Sunday business. Not really much that happening outside. Some people riding their bikes and getting some exercise. I don't know how you do it in this heat though. Probably some nice condos in there. Maybe some nice hotels too and Airbnbs. Probably the more expensive side. They got rental carts, more cafes, more restaurants, but I'm pretty sure most of these places are pizzerias and they only serve pizza and ice cream, burgers and souvlakis. More buildings, more buildings. Don't see a lot of construction cranes. Maybe some people are walking to get their tan on. Maybe there's a spa over here. Maybe there's uh, more hotels too but nothing much. Looks like Havana. Now I see it on this side, there's the beach. There's another beach right over here, <laughs> right over there. All right, so we hopped off this bus because it's not going to Zvedernets, but it is going to the beach, which is why the man said yes to this takes us to the plage. It doesn't look that bad, though there is a large fire over there. Oh my God, I hope that's not our house. Did we leave the oven on? I really hope everything is okay over there. That does not look good. I hope it's controlled or something. Nobody lost their house. Anyway, this is the beach here in Valore. It looks very bougie, uh, similar to Duras, but it reminds me of Marmaris a bit because of the mountains in the back. I'm sure the water is very warm and it's very pleasant. To All right, gonna walk into this cafe here and ask somebody if they know directions. Let's see. Person, that's you. Hey. Uh, I'm trying to go to Zvedernets. Zvedernets. Uh, bus. Zvedernets? Yes. Bus to Zvedernets. This bus here. Uh huh. Yes, but not Zvedernets. It's here. Okay. One bus. This is on there. Here. One bus. So this way? One bus here, one uh, Riviera. Riviera? Okay, number? Is there a number to the bus? Like bus number four, no, bus number? It's not number. No number? No number. Okay. Taxi, okay. One taxi. How much a taxi? How much? Uh, 10 euros. 10 euros? Okay, maybe, maybe. Uh, the Riviera is this way? Yes, when it's here. Okay. Uh, All right. B wait, bus stop here? Yes. Okay. Validator. So Acti doesn't want to go to this beautiful beach over here because she has to see some church, even though she doesn't believe in God. And so we're waiting under the bus stop under this hot ass sun. Anyway, now we're not going to the monastery. Now we're walking by the beach, trying to find a place to sit. Jesus Christ. Try to start off having a good day. Can't say anything. Can't say anything. Let that be a lesson to you, young man. Don't try to talk around your wife. Don't say shit. Just let it go. So I don't know what we're doing now. I'm standing here under this big palm tree. That's a big palm tree. I guess, I don't know, we're waiting for the bus or something. She's sitting here. Funny thing happened. Taxi passed by, saw me, said, hey, you want a taxi ride? Old white woman tries to flag it down, drives away. Hey, that was funny. That's funny though. That's, <laughs> That's funny. All right, by beach, we're going on this next bus. I don't know what's happening. Let's see what's next on this adventure for today. Sit back, watch and observe. 
Okay, now we're walking again downstairs, heading to the sand. All right, I guess we're going to the beach here. All right, well, I'm about to hop in. Let me see what this water is like. The sand is very, very hot, so I'm even walking with my slippers before I get into the water because it is extremely, extremely hot. Hold on. All right, let's put these things in one more time. Okay. All right. Kind of cool, kind of chill, not very warm. Kind of green, kind of green. Maybe out there it's more clean, but right here it's a bit dingy, a bit dirty. Please don't let me drop my phone. Nice view of the coast though, right behind me. It's not that bad, I can't complain, I can't complain. Let me get a little further out and show you something. All right, I can't go any deeper than this because I just forgot that I have money in my pocket. <laughs> so I don't want to get it wet, hold on. But this is the view of the beach from Valore here in the water, you know, up to my knees in the water. But uh, it's very nice, looks like Miami. Water is uh, not so clean, but very warm, hospitable, long coastline. Fire still raging over there. I wonder what's happening over there. But uh, it's an interesting view. We have some port ships and I think a cruise ship right there. And I think that's uh, Serenca, Serenza, the place we were trying to go, but we couldn't make it. And uh, here's some more hills over here. And it's nice. It's a cool view, very cool view, very uh adriatic very mediterranean you feel like you're in that part of the world it definitely gives you that feeling all right before the nuclear explosion happens behind me i'm gonna drop my phone off back at the shore and then hop in this water and have a nice dip but away from this water this is oh this is muddy and mucky all right so i just hopped out the water and i have to stand on my towel because these coals these sands are way too hot that fire is still burning in the background. I don't know what they're cooking or what they're doing. But anyway, when you go into the water, I just had a nice swim. The water is very gentle, very warm. If you just keep walking to where you can't walk anymore, the water becomes clear and you can actually see like everything that's under you. And it kind of freaks me out when that happens when I go to the beach. But overall, it's actually a pretty nice beach. I mean, this part is dirty because over here, this is the public beach and the drain is right here. But on this side right here, on this section is dirty. But if you walk about, down that way uh, where the private beaches are where the where the uh, benches and and umbrellas are it's cleaner though so hey it's not that bad good job Valori. this beach is actually a little bit better than Duras I'm not gonna lie it's just hot no shade no sun nothing I don't care about that I got my melanin popping come out here to Valori you can fly in the sky This scene with the burning fire all day while people are at the beach perfectly summarizes Albania. What the hell is happening and people just go about their lives. And as the sun sets on Valore, we sit here watching the horizon fall into the distance and the world still burns. Sitting here on this beach, I am never ungrateful for all the things that God has allowed me to do. I'm very thankful for my life, for everything that I've accomplished, for everything that he has allowed me to accomplish. And I hope that I can continue to be blessed the way that I am. Amen. Yeah, that fire is still burning, but this is what Valori looks like at night. It comes alive at nighttime. If you've ever been to Miami, or if you've been on Ocean Drive in particular, you'll know what this is like. City comes alive during the night, palm trees, neon signs, bright lights of the hotels and the cafes and the restaurants. It's very cool to see this. Didn't know that they had this in Europe. Kind of thought this was only an American thing, but that shows you how much more of the world I have to see. Nice Adriatic sunset with the city lighting up, with the cars, people coming out, and the mountains in the back. How can you beat that? I said, if you've been in Miami or Ocean Drive, but if you've been in Miami, most likely you've been on Ocean Drive in particular. That's what I meant to say. Anyway, we're outside here in Valore. 
at nighttime. All right, so I'm outside here in Valore at nighttime. I'm gonna show you what it's like to walk in Valore at night. Now I've said this before, but I'll say it again for anybody who's new to my channel, my videos, my content, my entire channel, especially when I'm doing travel vlogs, are meant to be viewed and understood by black travelers or black people who are interested in traveling or knowing what's abroad. I'm from the United States of America, Louisiana specifically, where many black people never get the opportunities to travel. And I go to places all across the world to try to live my best experience, not to bother anybody, not hurt anybody, only to document what I experience, what I see, what I hear, and share that with my people back in the US and also for other black people in the diaspora or in Africa. And after being here in Albania, I can say unequivocally, without doubt, Albania is racist. You heard it yourself with your own ears. And this is not the first time this has happened. In fact, it's so normal for this to happen in Albania, I ignored it when it did happen. From the very first day I came here to this day, Every time I've been outside in Albania, I have been called a racial slur. The N-word or the Z-word, which in Albanian is Zenchi, meaning black man, or slave, which is where that word derives from. I've been in this country since June 25th, 2023, and I recorded this video on July 23rd of the same year. And I've been releasing every day of my life in Albania because I constantly upload on my channel. I am walking outside, I'm interacting with people, I'm talking with people, and every single day that I've been outside, somebody has called me nigger or zenchi in Albania. 99% of the time, I ignore it and I don't even talk about it because I follow my own advice that I gave in the video about ignoring racial slurs because the majority of people who say that word to black people and they themselves are non-black are ignorant. And Albania has proven itself to have a large amount of people who are ignorant enough to hurl racial slurs at black tourists. But just because I ignore it doesn't mean I don't have the right to voice my opinion or talk about it. I am not saying that nobody has the right to say what they want to say. If you think it's okay to call black people racial slurs and you yourself are non-black, go ahead and do it. But I have the right and other black people have the right to say that's racist, that's stupid, that's bigoted, that's ignorant. That's how freedom of speech works in the quote unquote marketplace of ideas. You get to say that it's okay for black people to be called racial slurs and I get to say calling anybody racial slurs or derogatory names based on their skin color is wrong. Now since beginning my travels in Albania, not only have I been verbally attacked on the streets, but I've been attacked by racist people in my comments just for me posting that I'm in Albania without even talking about race or anything like that. And let's get into the apologetics these people go into for excusing the racist behavior of the Albanians I've met on the streets. The first excuse they give is that Albanians heard the word nigga or nigger from rap music and they don't mean it in an offensive way. Okay, if they don't mean it in an offensive way, how come every single time multiple times that I've recorded it on camera and times that have not been recorded on camera, when I've approached Albanians that have called me the N-word, they deny that they said it or then act like they don't know English all of a sudden. It's a farce. They are obviously saying this word knowing that it is offensive because there has never been one time when I've approached an Albanian after they've said this word to me that they then say it again to my face multiple times you can watch the multiple other videos where i've approached people who have said this and they all clam up and get scared like pussies i am not threatening them i am not being violent towards them or anything like that as soon as they are approached with what they have said they clam up secondly 
Albanians or any other group of non-black people cannot tell black people what to be offended at. The same way black people can't tell y'all what to be offended about. For example, if I were to get on here to say Kosovo is Serbia and Kosovo belongs to Serbia, you have the right to be offended as an Albanian or as a Kosovar or whatever because your people are there, your family are there, and that's a problem y'all are dealing with. The same way I got to deal with being called nigger by the police, by employers, by romantic opportunities. I have to deal with the discrimination that follows that word. You don't, you stupid motherfucker. That's why you don't have the right to say it. Thirdly, this idea that Albanians are like black people or Albanians are the black people of Europe is stupid as fuck. Because I want somebody to tell me right now how an Albanian can be identified as being Albanian without opening their mouth, somebody knowing their name, hearing them speak their language, or knowing their religion. Just by looking at an Albanian, how can somebody identify them in a crowd full of white people? And then compare that to how fast they'll discover a black person in a crowd full of white people. If somebody can tell me how they can do that, I will delete my entire channel. Until then, shut up the fuck up y'all are not black people y'all might be poor y'all might go through struggle but black identity is not tied to poverty and struggle we are more than what you see on tv you might think being black is all about living in the ghetto or being a gangster or a drug dealer but we have intellectuals we have writers we have politicians we have economists we have entrepreneurs we are more than just the stupid shit y'all be doing all over europe and then want to say you are black people too you're not stop stop fourthly there are some people that say Oh, Albania went through all these years of communism and they're poor and they're ignorant and you can't blame poor people. Listen, I've been poor my entire life. I come from the second poorest state in the United States of America. I've been traveling across the world, dealing and interacting with poor people in Indonesia, in Tunisia, in Kenya, in Tanzania. I've been everywhere, everywhere. Poverty does not give you the right to be hateful and ignorant and use slurs against people. Nowhere else in the world has this happened this much. And I've been in the poorest slums you can imagine. Don't believe me? Go check out my other channel, Backpack Bandits. Finally, if your first response to me talking about how it's wrong for non-black people to call black people the n-word is, well, you know, black people say it all the time, or it's just a word, or, you know, this is just the culture here. If your first response is to explain it, you're a racist. If this video was about women getting sexually harassed or assaulted in Albania, and your first response was to say, well, women can't be respected all the time, you'd be called a sexist. The same thing applies here. There's even a debate amongst black people whether we should stay it. So how about you stay out of our business and just speak your own language and stop fucking with us. There's a lot more I could say here and this video is running out, but I'll just say black travelers, when you come to Albania, expect to be called nigger in the streets or zenchi. It's real. It's happening. All right. So I found my market. So I'm going to buy some things and come back out. All right. So I got a bag full of things. So it's hard for me to hold my phone and all the other things I have at the same time and film, but you get the idea. Thanks for watching. All right, I'm walking home now. So if you come to Valore, I just want you to see that they have like an amusement park right next to the water, which is very cool for kids if you really want to go out and take them out. Kind of a kid friendly place. Almost every place I've been in Albania, it's something for adults and something for kids at the same time. Ferris wheels to me are kind of a ripoff. You just sit in a chair and go high. Come on now, you can just ride in the elevator. <laughs> all right, I just dropped by this place, Novus, because it said traditional food, and all I see is pizza and gyros and souvlaki here in Albania. And I picked up a traditional thing, and I'm going to try it right so now. So I paid 600 lek for this thing right here. It's chicken, and inside it's mushrooms, and it's wrapped in bacon. And I'm going to try it out right now. It was uh, 600 lek, which is about six euros for just one piece of chicken. Once again, Albania is showing how expensive it can be, though they did give me some bread for free. Actually, quite a lot of bread, actually. So I'm gonna try it out and see how it is. All right, the chicken is 
you can't see it, but it's very, it's filet chicken, so there's no bones. As soon as I cut into it, it's very tender, it falls off. It's very good. It's well cooked chicken. It's covered in like a gravy, so it has like a real savory taste to it. I'll show you. As soon as I dip the bread in, you can see all this gravy on the front of it. And yeah, that's just hearty, fat, gravy, lard. The same thing you would eat on Thanksgiving. You know, I walked in there, I didn't shoot the video, but basically you walk inside and it's like a Piccadilly. They only had like potatoes, this chicken thing, some beef and some eggplant and some, and I think some spinach out there in the front part. And that was it, you know? Um, finding traditional Albanian food is very hard in Albania. Most of it is just pizza and gyros, like I said earlier. But this is actually pretty good, though the price does not warrant it. For 600 lek, I should be able to get this also with like some potatoes, some vegetables, some sides, that sort of thing. This country is just very expensive to eat out just to have fun. Many other countries, 600, six euros can get you a full course meal. And in many countries, 10 euros can get you dinner for two. So, you know, Albania is just pricey, man. I don't know how the people here do it with the salaries they make, but anyway, I'm gonna have one more bite of this chicken. Very savory, ah, okay. I was trying to cut into the chicken and then my plastic fork <laughs> broke right here. But one more bite just to show you. So as you can see inside, there's like peppers, mushrooms, covered in gravy, filet chicken. It's good, it's good, I'm not gonna lie, that's good. But for the price, it's not right. But say la vie. One more thing, I just bit into this part of this chicken in the middle where it was just all mushrooms, all pepper, all chicken broth, all cream. One of the best bites I've ever had in my life. It was very savory, very flavorful very aromatic you know how you bite mushrooms and you get that just aroma of earth because mushrooms are fungus and that was very good i'm not gonna lie and i can't get enough can't get enough of this bread and gravy right here that just touches your soul that just mm, warms you up reminds you of thanksgiving with grandma in the kitchen god that's good all right novus i give you a five out of five on the dish chicken was very good give you a one out of five on the price, but I don't blame you, I blame Albania. And for the uh, customer service, four out of five. Guys were very nice inside, everybody was attentive. You know what, change that to a five out of five, good job.